Hey guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about psychotic disorders. So we'll talk brief psychotic disorder, schizophreniform, schizophrenia, schizoaffective, unipolar major depression with psychotic features, and delusional disorder. So we'll talk, of course, about diagnostic criteria, best next steps in treatment, etc. Let's dive in. Let's get started. So first up, we have brief psychotic disorder. Some of the really important distinctions that can be made on exam day as they relate to psychotic disorders, of course, as with all the psych conditions, will include the duration of time that the symptoms have been present. And then also, if a mood disorder is present and how that mood disorder is present in relation to the psychotic symptoms will help you with your diagnosis. So for brief psychotic disorder, the focus is going to be on the duration of symptoms. The duration of the episode in brief psychotic disorder is at least one full day, but less than one month, with the patient then returning to their pre-episode functioning. Now, during this time, one or more symptoms of hallucinations, delusions, disorganized speech, grossly disorganized or catatonic behavior will be present. Now, we'll go into detail with examples for each of these symptoms when we discuss schizophrenia. Now, finally... The disorder, as I've mentioned previously with all disorders, it's not better explained by any other psych disorder, any medical condition, or substance abuse. Now, substances which you want to keep an eye out for in a vignette that can cause hallucinations are those like LSD, psychogenic mushrooms, um, you know, there's a couple others, uh, PCP. Uh, certain medical conditions that can cause hallucinations might include neurological conditions like dementia or even seizure disorders. Now, the treatment for brief psychotic disorder will include assessing for the presence of homicidal and suicidal ideation and patient safety with psychiatric hospitalization if necessary and if appropriate. Then, once we've got them safe, a second-generation antipsychotic medication like aripiprazole or risperidone can be used in the majority of patients. Now, if the patient has severe agitation on presentation, we can give them a short-acting benzodiazepine. And of course, as an adjunct to uh, medication, psychotherapy is warranted. All right, now let's talk schizophrenia um, and schizophreniform disorders because they have the same symptoms, but the duration is different. So schizophreniform disorder lasts from one month to six months. Remember, acute is uh, less than a month. So schizophreniform is one month to six months. Schizophrenia is present for six months or longer. Now, the symptoms of schizophrenia can be divided into both positive and negative symptoms, right? Positive symptoms are things like hallucinations, delusions, or disorganized thinking or behavior. I always think positive symptoms are things that are added to the person's uh, demeanor. Negative symptoms are things that are missing. Okay, and we'll talk about that momentarily. Now, remember, hallucinations are defined as that sensory perception without any external stimuli. The hallucinations seen in schizophrenia are most commonly going to be auditory and oftentimes take the form of voices talking directly to the patient. But the auditory hallucinations can also just include general sounds. Now, visual hallucinations frequently include things like glowing orbs or flashes of color or light. Uh, we have olfactory hallucinations. These are, of course, strange smells. Um, gustatory would be a strange taste. Somatic hallucinations would be some sort of um, sensation of touch or pain that can be uh, you know, varied across many different uh, things, like different types of touch, different types of pain. Now, we also have delusions. Delusions, remember, are fixed false beliefs that are there despite indisputable evidence to the contrary, and delusions can be categorized as bizarre and non-bizarre. A bizarre delusion is a delusion without any possibility of being true. So like supernatural delusions, like a race of aliens are impersonating people and trying to stop the uh, patient from exposing them, that sort of very bizarre thing. Now, a non-bizarre delusion is something that has the possibility of being true, but is still less likely. So for example, let's say the patient's being stalked by their high school teacher. All evidence points to the contrary, but that's something they think it's true and possible. It's, it's not true. It's possible, but highly unlikely. Now, the content of the delusions also, it can be characterized as ideas of reference, uh, erotomanic, grandiose, paranoid, or nihilistic. And that's all step one stuff. So I'm not going to waste your time just explaining what all those definitions mean. You should know. 
And after delusions, the last positive finding we have is a disorganization. So remember, uh, disorganization referring to thinking patterns or speech patterns. All right, let's talk now about negative symptoms. Like As I mentioned, negative symptoms are things that are sort of taken away. And uh, the negative symptoms are the ones that tend to be resistant to treatment. And patients who have multiple negative symptoms are less likely to demonstrate recovery even when we treat schizophrenia. Now, negative symptoms are things like apathy uh, that could manifest in a variety of ways, like poor hygiene or failure to adhere to responsibilities. Allogia can manifest as an increased time before someone responds to a question that's being asked, or uh, they may not be able to communicate cohesively. A flattened affect is commonly seen, and this includes things like unchanging facial expressions, a lack of eye contact, loss of expressive gestures or changes in tone when having a conversation. And finally, we have something known as a sociality, which includes a lack of engagement with peers socially and little to no intimacy with any individual. So those are your negative symptoms. And remember, these are less likely to respond to treatment. So the diagnostic criteria for schizophrenia includes the patient having two or more of the characteristic symptoms we just went over. Again, hallucinations, delusions, disorganized speech or behavior, catatonic behavior, or negative symptoms, as well as the patient having at least one major area of functioning that's markedly below baseline levels prior to the onset of symptoms. Now, these major areas of functioning are things such as personal hygiene, uh, work, school, interpersonal relationships. Next, the disturbance must be continuously present, remember, for at least six months. And something that you want to keep in mind is that during that time, the patient doesn't have to be showing the same severity of symptoms. Okay, so go up and down in severity. Now, for at least one month, at least two characteristic symptoms should be present unless the patient is successfully treated in under one month's time. But the remaining five months or longer can include prodromal or even residual symptoms. Now, these prodromal or residual symptoms can manifest themselves as less severe versions of whichever characteristic the patient was demonstrating. So, for example, if a patient was having delusions about aliens kidnapping people, they may still believe aliens, aliens exist on Earth, but they're not, let's say, barricading themselves at home to prevent from being kidnapped. Or if they were previously hearing voices with clear instructions, now maybe they're hearing muff, muffled whispers without any sort of um, you know, recommended actions to be taken. And these prodromal or residual symptoms can manifest as only negative symptoms or two or more symptoms that we went over, which are characteristic of schizophrenia, including hallucinations, delusions, disorganized speech, disorganized behavior, or catatonic behavior. Now, Schizoaffective disorder and mood disorder with psychotic features have been ruled out here because they are not the cause of active phase symptoms. Now, the way these disorders are ruled out as a cause of these characteristic symptoms of schizophrenia is that there are no major depressive, manic, or mixed episodes occurring at the same time as active phase symptoms, or if they are occurring at the same time, their duration is brief compared to the duration of active and residual periods of the characteristic symptoms of schizophrenia. Now, symptoms also can't be attributed, as always, to substance use or a general medical condition. And finally, there is more stringent criteria for diagnosing schizophrenia in patients with autistic disorder or any other developmental disorder because some of the symptoms, like disorganized thinking and speech or behavior, may already be present and associated with this disorder. So the patient must have either prominent delusions, prominent hallucinations um, outside of the other things I just mentioned that are present for at least one month and less successfully treated. Now, the treatment for schizophrenia is going to be first to assess the safety of the patient and of others that could be affected by the patient. If the patient may potentially harm themselves or others, or if they will not be able to care for themselves because of their illness, then hospitalization in a psychiatric facility is warranted. Now, the patient should then be started on a second generation antipsychotic medication. And for the majority of patients, this will be aripiprazole or risperidone, both of which are second generations. Now, patients that present with agitation are often giving haloperidol, which is a first generation antipsychotic, or olanzapine, which is a second generation. Patients with insomnia due to psychosis can be given quetiapine, which is a, a uh, second generation antipsychotic. Now, the patient should then be 
be continued on whichever medication they were given that they responded best to. If only a partial response is seen, uh, then the dose should be increased until the patient has maxed out on the safe therapeutic range. If symptoms persist, then we don't want to add a second antipsychotic, but instead switch over to an entirely different antipsychotic and see if treatment with that new drug is effective. If suicidal ideation persists while patients receive their antipsychotic treatment, in that case, clozapine would be a drug that we want to switch to. Now, like I mentioned earlier, schizophreniform disorder is a disorder whereby the criteria for schizophrenia are met, but the total duration of the disorder ranges from one month to six months. So remember, in brief psychotic disorder, the episode lasts one full day, but less than one month. A patient um, with a patient um, returning to their pre-episode functioning within that time frame. The duration of the disorder uh, lasting from one to six months is schizophreniform. And if it's lasting longer than six months, we call it, of course, schizophrenia. Now, let's talk schizoaffective disorder. So this is where schizo and affect, the, there is a mood disorder component to the, their schizophrenic symptoms. So that's very important to keep in mind. Now, to meet the diagnostic criteria for schizoaffective disorder, the patient will have an uninterrupted duration of illness, and during this time, there will be a major manic or depressive mood episode in addition to at least two characteristic symptoms of hallucinations, delusions, disorganized speech, disorganized or catatonic behavior, and negative symptoms. Of those two symptoms, at least one must be hallucinations, delusions, or disorganized speech. Basically, that means that the patient cannot have a mood episode and disorganized behavior or catatonic behavior and negative symptoms without hallucinations, delusions, or disorganized speech and meet the criteria. And this is because catatonic behavior and negative symptoms may be seen in unipolar major depression. Okay, so that's the first part of the criteria. The next part of the diagnostic criteria for schizoaffective disorder involves having hallucinations and delusions for two or more weeks, during which time there is no major mood episode, and this can occur during the entire lifetime duration of the illness. What does that mean? That basically means that for at least two weeks, a patient who has a major manic or depressive mood episode is not experiencing a major mood episode, but they're still experiencing psychotic symptoms. And the psychotic symptoms can occur outside of a major mood episode. That's not to say that they don't, they don't also occur during a mood episode as they frequently do, but this is one of the ways that schizoaffective disorder is distinguished from the other disorder where the psychotic symptoms of hallucinations and delusions at some point have manifested by themselves without a major mood episode for two weeks. Now, I'm really emphasizing this point because, like I said earlier, some of the ways they can test you on exam day is going to include changing time courses or mood involvement and how this changes the diagnosis. Next, the criteria for a major mood episode are met and occur for most of the total duration of both the active and residual portions of the disorder. This means that the mood disorder plays a very large role in the disorder. Often, more than half the time the patient is actively going to experience symptoms of schizoaffective disorder, they're also experiencing a major mood episode. And lastly, as usual, the symptoms cannot be attributed to substances or some other general medical condition that would better explain the findings. Now, in schizoaffective disorder, there's also a specifier that goes along with the diagnosis to distinguish between depressive type and bipolar type. And this is important because it changes patient management. In depressive type, only major depressive episodes are seen, but in bipolar type, episodes of mania and possibly of major depression can be seen. Now, the treatment for schizoaffective disorder includes antipsychotics for the psychotic symptoms. Usually, this would be a second-generation antipsychotic, and antidepressants will be used for depressive types, with a wide range of antidepressant medications used, and then mood stabilizers like valproate or lithium being used for bipolar types. Now, as always, we have to rule out um, a patient who is homicidal or suicidal, and if they are experiencing any either of those, then psychiatric hospitalization, of course, will be appropriate. Now, we go over major depressive disorder in another lecture, but due to the overlap that can exist with symptoms of various psychiatric disorders, I want to mention unipolar major depression with psychotic features here. 
So aside from meeting the full diagnostic criteria for unipolar major depression, the patient here also has delusions or hallucinations which are present only during an episode of unipolar major depression. The delusions and hallucinations never occur outside of an episode of major depression in unipolar major depression with psychotic features. Now, this is in contrast to both schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder, where psychotic symptoms do occur in the absence of major depression. So, in schizophrenia, there are no major depressive, manic, or mixed episodes occurring at the same time as active face symptoms, or if they are occurring at the same time, their duration is brief compared to the duration of active and residual periods of the characteristic symptoms of schizophrenia. Now, in schizoaffective disorder, the patient has hallucinations and or delusions for two or more weeks, during which time there's no major mood episode. And finally, in unipolar major depression with psychotic features, during an episode of unipolar major depression, delusions or hallucinations will be present. All right, now the last disorder that we're going to cover in this lecture is delusional disorder, and the diagnostic criteria for delusional disorder is met when one or more delusions with a duration of one month or longer will occur in the patient. The criteria for schizophrenia here is not met, and patients are still able to function. The patient's behavior is only bizarre as it pertains to the delusion or the repercussion of those delusions. Now, for example, if a patient believes that they are being tracked by the FBI uh, through their cell phone, they may choose to get rid of their cell phone, but continue to function appropriately and normally in other domains of their life. So clearly, not having a cell phone could be seen as a functional impairment in many environments, but it is a clear repercussion to the delusion, and the impairment is not severe. Additionally, if manic or depressive episodes are present, they are brief compared to the duration of the delusional periods. And finally, as always, the symptoms are not better explained by another psych disorder, medication, substances, or a general medical condition. Now, the subtypes of delusions seen in delusional disorder can include the grandiose type, where the patient believes they are uh, especially powerful or talented in some way. Uh, we have the persecutory type, where patients believe others are conspiring against them. We have the erotomanic type, where the patient believes that another person is secretly in love with them, often a person with uh, some sort of high status like a celebrity. Oftentimes, this, this leads to, involves stalking, and can lead to assaultive behavior. We have the jealous type delusion, which involves the patient believing that a partner is unfaithful and will relentlessly attempt to prove it, even though there's clear evidence to the contrary. There's the somatic type, which involves the patient thinking, thinking that their body is diseased or infected with parasites. And the mixed type is when there's no predominant single delusional theme, and unspecified is any delusion that doesn't fall into one of these categories. The treatment for delusional disorder will be a second generation antipsychotic, so things like aripiprazole or uh, ziprazidone as well, they should undergo psychotherapy. All right, let's do some content review questions. Give you 20 seconds on the clock, but you'll probably need a lot more time because this is a long vignette. So hit the pause button and then come on back when you think you have the right answer. The correct answer here is D. All right, next question. I'll give you 20 seconds, but go ahead and hit that pause button if you need more time, and then come on back. The correct answer here is C. Let's do one more question. So go ahead and hit that pause button. I'll also give you 20 seconds on the clock and then come on back. The correct answer here is C. All right, that is the end of our psychotic disorders lecture. I will see you on the next one. Uh -huh.